So I think there are uh, three types of uh, multilateral uh, institutions. One I would classify as uh, do no harm. You have a number of international organizations that are designed to constrain the behavior of uh, each country so that it, they, it limits the negative consequences of that behavior on other countries. So in the economic sphere, a couple of examples are things like competitive devaluations or trade barriers and trade tariffs, uh, things like that. And the world has found that uh, constraining those kinds of behavior is uh, quite a good thing. A second principle that I think is uh, really important is the pr principle of uh, uh, do some good. Uh, that's really a principle that was born out of uh, decolonization uh, of, uh, after the uh, Second World War. It's about solidarity with developing countries. It's the organization of uh, finance and policy discussions with those countries about how to, uh, uh, how to lift them up and how to deal with the scourge of poverty and conflict that uh, is uh, so prevalent in many parts of the world. And then the third principle, I think, is the principle of uh, the delivery of uh, global public goods. Uh, and that's obviously uh, climate change, biodiversity, uh, the new agreement on protection of the high seas, etc. Uh, it's a very important principle. Uh, it's something where we have seriously underinvested in the past. We've now agreed that we want to do something about it, but we haven't really agreed on who's going to pay for it. So I'll give you one example of the way in which the current system reinforces inequality. In 2021, as part of the response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the IMF issued something like $650 billion of new, what they call special drawing rights, SDRs. The way in which this was allocated, what's called quotas in the IMF, the richest, most important countries got the most. So the US alone got $113 uh, billion. Africa, as an entire continent, only got 5%, $33 uh, billion. So you have the people who need the most get the least, and the people who need the least get the most. That's the problem with the current system. And reimagining is not so difficult. It's just imagine a new system where actually the allocation of resources and finances was proportionate to need or linked to need or linked to outcomes rather than being linked to the political power of each institution in the existing uh, order. So multilateralism is only valuable if countries believe that having a multilateral system and abiding by some rules constraining their own behavior is actually worthwhile. And the difficulty that we have right now is that the geopolitical rivalries between countries are spilling over into multilateralism. So countries see multilateralism as constraining them in these rivalries rather than as helping to manage that level of competition. Competition based on rules is really important. Multilateralism provides those rules, but you need a agreement beforehand that says, let's compete, but let's compete on the basis of rules. We don't yet have that agreement in many of the uh, spheres in which the multilateral institutions are uh, operating. And absent that, it's very difficult for multilateralism to deliver the kind of uh, benefits that, in principle, it could. My hope is that when countries see that by acting unilaterally they are not making progress on some of the global challenges, that they will move back towards multilateralism. But we're not at that point yet.